Hi there, my name is Carolina Robinson and in this session we will discuss all things ZPD. First, we will learn a little bit about the theorists who invented it, a bit about the actual zone itself, and learn how to apply the zone of proximal development in our own classroom situations. Ready, set, go. Lev Vygotsky, a Russian psychologist, based his cognitive development theory on the fundamental role of social interaction in the development of cognition. Vygotsky's theory asserted three themes. First, social interaction plays an essential role in the process of cognitive development. Second, the importance of a more knowledgeable other. An MKO is a person who possesses more knowledge about a particular subject than the learner knows. And third, the identification of the zone of proximal development, which to Vygotsky is the sweet spot where learning occurs. Let's look at this drawing to explain the zone of proximal development. Vygotsky's definition of ZPD is the distance between the actual developmental level as determined by the independent problem solving and the level of potential development as determined through problem solving under adult guidance or in collaboration with more capable peers. In other words, ZPD is the difference between what a learner can do alone and what they cannot do without help. You can also think about instruction as a continuum. On one side, there is what learners can do independently. If you are teaching in this area, the skills are already mastered by a student. No learning takes place because the skills are too easy. On the other side of the continuum are skills that a learner cannot do on their own. Information here is too difficult without direct assistance of a teacher. In the middle is the ZPD, where learning is most sensitive. Instruction is most beneficial in the zone of proximal development because it is just beyond a student's capabilities. Let's imagine a father and a young son playing on a basketball court. At some point, the son tells his dad that he wants to dunk the ball but the task is just outside his reach. The father, the MKO, picks the son up and together they dunk the ball. Eventually, the son would like to dunk the ball on his own by learning the skills to do so. The father would retreat and offer less and less support until he is no longer picking the son up and the son is dunking on his own. This silly example illustrates ZPD and MKO and explains learning and development as a series of steps. Once a student has mastered one step, then and only then can they move on to the other to eventually master the skill independently. So how does one use understanding of the zone of proximal development in our own classrooms? First, it is important to identify a student's CPD and assess it often to see if they are learning the skills that they are required. Second, it is important to understand that students have different ZPDs. This leads to differentiation, which means you should consider tailoring instruction to meet individual needs of students and to combat boredom or frustration. Remember, students will learn differently, but every student can learn. As a teacher and the MKO, you are to provide scaffolding or a variety of instructional techniques to move students progressively towards stronger understanding and ultimately greater independence in the learning process. A few examples of scaffolding techniques include you demonstrating a math skill and having the student imitate your actions. Another is where you start a math problem and the student that you're working with completes the rest of the steps in the problem. The last scaffolding example is where you assign a student to cooperate with more developed peers for understanding of the math problem. Remember that Vygotsky's theory teaches us that social interactions are essential for learning. So, just as a recap, we have learned that the zone of proximal development is the difference between someone can do independently and what they cannot do without help. The role of a teacher, parent, or peer as the most knowledgeable other is to provide instruction through scaffolding as a way to move the learner to independently mastering a skill. I would leave you with these final words of Vygotsky's. We don't learn because we have developed. 
We develop because we have learned. Thanks for listening.